All right. Okay. Let's get started. Hi guys and welcome back. My name is Ryan Selvey and we're on day three of Offset. It's the time where I get to take over Adobe Live and we get to bring on really cool artists and talk about their process, their inspiration, some of their sketches, their work, and we get to actually relay any of the questions or comments that you may have in the chat uh, over to them and ask them the questions that you want to hear. That said, this is a live stream, but the replay is available on YouTube and Behance. So if you're watching the replay, hey, how's it going? Thanks for being here. Uh, I already see that Annika is our moderator for today, which I'm a big fan of. She does a really great design show over on Adobe Live as well. So make sure you check out her stuff. Thank you for being here, Annika. And uh, a great hello to Oliver. If you guys are over on YouTube, make sure you hop on over to Behance. That's where most of the conversation is happening. We'll have moderators that are also help guide the discussion. And, you know, I'll be sure to be able to grab your questions and throw them over to Tyler. First person that we have today is Tyler Pate. Um, he is a... And, uh, illustrator and graphic designer that's helping brands and people tell stories. That's what he says on his website. But I'm going to let him actually come on in in just a second and talk about himself uh, in his own words rather than the things that we described from him. Uh, but without further ado, I'm going to go ahead and bring him on in. So welcome to the show, Tyler. Hello. Hi. Good morning. Ryan. How are you go? How's it going? It's good, man. Good. Just getting started to uh, LA morning. So we're all good. Oh, yeah. So it's first thing for you. Thank you for getting up and uh, hopping on camera. That's, uh, I know that's asking a lot. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's, it's, it's my pleasure, man. Uh, well, thank you for being here. I guess for the people that uh, are hearing about you for the first time or are just tuning in because they're a big fan, probably want to hear you in your own words. Do you want to just give the quick ele elevator pitch of um, kind of who you are as a person and as an artist? Yeah, yeah. So my name's Tyler Pate. Uh, I'm a graphic designer, illustrator, art director. I like to really just say all around creative. I, I just like to dabble in just tinkering and, and creating things when I can, whether that's, you know, vector or logo builds or website builds, even sometimes just cutting some wood and, and painting on it. I mean, it's, it's really everything under the sun. Um, I'm originally from South Carolina. Um, I've been in this industry for about 11 years now as an art director and, and graphic designer, like I said, um, come from a pretty small uh, college graphic design related, it was a uh, visual communication background. And from there, just uh, pursued graphic design as, a, as an art director for an ad agency for a little while. Uh, after that, I, I freelanced for a couple years and then also picked back up at a, another larger industry lead as a art director. Fantastic. Um, well, thank you for taking the time for being on the show. I uh, found your work through online means, but I'm a big fan of everything we found. I think for everyone to just get a clear picture of what you're all about, we can hop right into our very first segment, which is when we take a look at your work. Let's, Let's look at your work. So I went ahead and I pulled up uh, both your Instagram and your Behance, uh, obviously shout out to Behance. Uh, but uh, I think you have a really good spread of work that you're really good at honestly just getting up there and showing. But something that you honestly have also been kind of getting into lately is the approach to reels, which is fun. Uh, do you want to talk a little, about, a little bit about how you got into building reels and how you adapt your work to this new vertical uh, fast yeah. medium? Yeah, it's, it's definitely interesting because I found out, man, it's it's been years now, but video always performs better than the static image. And then I realized more in depth, it's it's because of process. And I think that process is, is something that someone like my mom would understand right off the bat, rather than the final illustration that took maybe 15 hours to make. So right. everyone's more <laughs> curious about the process. So that was definitely a, a trigger to like, all right, there, there's something here, let's, create more of this type of content. It started out with time lapses and eventually that led to what you see here, which is 
all right, here's a couple steps that get me to that final. And it's like, now I'm going to put you on the spot a little bit here. Yeah. Uh, are, is this actually the creation of it or do you go back and then fake recreate the moments uh, <laughs> when you're building stuff? <laughs> yes, I go back. I have to go back. Um, yeah. It's just one of, it makes the process easier to, to document it. Otherwise you're going to see the back and forth, which you, you'll burn up a, a minute easily doing that. So right. I have to then deconstruct the illustration. I remember the highlights of these were big moments of that piece coming together. So I always go back to that. Or if there's a, a piece such as like these little diamond squares, really mm -hmm. easy to create. That's something that I can highlight to show people how to make. So making those opportunities presentable is, is kind of the key with these videos. Absolutely. Now you have this uh, cartoony style that uh, is very playful. How would you describe your own style when it comes to how you approach your work? Oh, man, it's it's a tough one because I constantly try to explore things that I'm just interested in. Um, I love this almost surreal, cartoonish, colorful um, approach to my work. Uh, I always like to, if, there's two approaches, really. If I'm going to dive into something that's really hyper-realistic and, and a lot of the packaging and stuff that I do is like that, I, I then dive into this other side where let's keep it lighthearted. So let's put some weird details that make no sense. Like I'll put a little hair in there somewhere. I don't know. Mm -hmm. It's just making it lighthearted is, is kind of what I want. And, and like what you see here, it's I was exploring with the 3D tool. It's like, what can we do that's simple enough for this parameter, but also probably would bring a smile on someone's face. So now, were you a uh, rocket popsicle kid when it came to the ice cream truck? Oh man, you know what? I, I actually like the, uh, what was it? Banana fudge pops. Oh, you know, really? fudge, oh wow, banana no, fudge. I actually don't hear as much. Yeah, uh, those are I was right, a big yeah. fan of the Choco Taco and of course any like Reese's ice cream uh, is yeah. always my go-to. Um, but I also really like kind of this flat style that you have going on as well. I know you said you were using the inflate um, or new 3D styles of Illustrator. Um, but can you tell me a little bit more about this piece? Yeah, so this was, sadly enough, I built this around the time I think it was MF Doom passed. So this is so, sort of an older piece, but it was one of those where I wanted to do some sort of tribute. I'm a huge fan of MF Doom, so that, that was a starter. Like, how could we throw in a lot of little hidden treats in there that, you know, the OGs would understand. It's like, ah, oh, that's cool. And then create this idea of kind of came to me as like lyrical cereal. And I had this this sketch that used a cereal box and I was just trying to figure out where I could use it. And then I was like, all right, I could use it for this MF Doom piece. And then I merged a couple of these ideas together that I had and, and really just came together pretty easily. And in the color palette, I think it was just experimentation. It's like, oh, all the right, color palette's great. I mean, my favorite color is green, yeah. so that I'm a little bit there biased, but the limited palette is nice. Did, when you mm -hmm. were approaching it, did you build it all in green or was it something that you went in with like black and white and then recolored it um, at the end with different colors? Yeah, I, I did start with green. Uh, I think green was just one of those ideas with uh, the MC Crunch. So the cereal, I was like, oh, it'd be cool if the cereal was green. And then I just started there and then it was all like a, a green, like duotone color palette at first. And then once I finished, I went back and I was like, all right, well, this color can switch out with this other darker color. Uh, just refining it a bit more as I dug in. Now, how long would a piece like this take you? This piece was not that long. Honestly, it's figuring out the typography. That's probably the longest thing is like, what and how should that typography look? So I probably spent maybe an hour or two just on figuring that out. The illustration itself of Doom Up Doom's head, that probably would have been less than a minute. Um, yeah. It was pretty simple. That's just a bunch of squares and then duplicating over. So that, yeah, another 20 minutes of that. Um, but just concept and refining it. And, all right, let's, should we do his shoulders or should we do his whole body or should we do his hand? How do we do that? I figured out a lot of that while I was in the process. So that yeah. took the most. And uh, I, a little bit later in today's show, we're going to be actually going into your sketchbook. We'll talk about a little bit of the uh, beginning process and how you approach something. Um, which it'll be interesting to see kind of, do you do thumbnails or do you kind of just dive straight into vector programs first? Um, and I'm excited to talk to you about that. But another thing that we were talking about right before we actually went live is uh, your kind of approach to type is something of a recent concentration for you. 
what uh, has really invigorated your interest in type and what's your relation with it in the past? Yeah, I, I've always had interests and especially with customizing type. That's always been really fun. And that's one of those things where if you can master that, you can really open up the, the floodgates for any sort of logo build or, or, or poster treatment. And I think the beginning of this year, I was thinking about that more and I've, I've been working on a lot more projects and style guides that, that need that custom type. So I was like, all right, well, this is one thing that I, I feel like is something that I struggle with sometimes. So it's like, let's just dive in. Let's pursue this more than the little goofy illustrations that I typically do. So I've been trying to focus on type a little bit more and, and just honing it in and figuring out ways to make that illustration better because of the type. Yeah, Since. I mean, it takes a, a lot into uh, a lot from the piece if there is bad type, but even great illustration. Mm -hmm. um, this one in particular, I think, is just very smartly chosen. Um, I, I it's I know it's subtle, but even the choice of the the A for the ace is such a nice. I like the little overhang. Um, by the way, in the chat, we have Brandon Wolfel saying that you're the best. So you have uh, a <laughs> fanfare happening. Uh, also, hello to Kendall, Katarina and Sean. Uh, thank you guys for tuning on in. If you guys have any questions as we're talking through stuff, we don't have a dedicated Q&A time. It's just as it comes and goes. So if you see some work that you're inspired by, you have any questions about, please, by all means, throw it in the chat and I will relay it to Tyler. Um, of your recent pieces, I know I have your Instagram up here, obviously. Um, and we also have your Behance as well. Do you have a personal favorite that you have recently posted? Uh... I know you're not supposed to pick your favorite child, but here we are. <laughs> uh, I'll put a number on them real quick. You yeah. watch out. Uh, you know, honestly, if you keep scrolling down, I did this piece where it looks like a stack of paper and it's a creative pain piece. So for, for those who don't know, uh, the creative pain is, is there it is. Uh, it's my brand and, and kind of like my, um, my go to for creative decision making when it comes to personal work. So whenever I get an opportunity, and it's typically if I have the time, uh, I like to double back in and expand on that as much as I can. And I, this is back to the conversation with type, thinking about, well, let's not just make an illustration. Let's make an illustration of type. Right. And I wanted to see what I could do with that. And I had this idea of creative paperwork, thinking about like the corporate side of, of the creative decision making that a lot of people don't understand or see. And I was like, let's manifest that into something real. Uh, so I was able to do it with this one and I did this earlier in the year. So this one I've been pretty stoked about. Yeah, it came out great. It's, um, it has a lot of little Easter eggs going to it. Mm -hmm. Um, I mean, whether it's the pencil jammed into the side or the fact that it's yeah. kind of being soggy over top of the coffee. Um, I, I think it's interesting also how you showed the breakdown of it. Now, is this all kind of built in Illustrator and then do you bring it into Photoshop for some of these textures or do you predominantly stay in something like Illustrator? Yeah, you you nailed it. It's it's about, I would say about 80, 90% vector. And then okay. all the little detail and grit I, I prefer to do in Photoshop. Just time saver and the textures are, are typically better for what I want. Do you find that you mostly use your own textures or do you kind of outsource them to different resource packs that you get offline? It's it's a mixture. Yeah, you know, honestly, the majority of my textures and, and line work is is the stock. I, I love uh -huh. just a tapered brush that that right there will do wonders. And then you could put some fuzz over effects to it or um, like, what is it like uh, gradient overlays and things like that, that, that really just bring it to the next level. Right. Um, but yeah, I've picked up a few, especially there's there's a couple water brush textures and brushes that I've picked up and I've had for years and uh, back in college. So yeah, I mean, I old reliable. Her. If it works, you don't have yeah. to switch it up at all, you know? Mm -hmm. um, I, I personally really liked the one that we had up a minute ago with the card. Um, the distress that you had on that one is really great, but it's also cool to see the subtlety when you do it a little bit less heavy handed here. Mm -hmm. um, I think that uh, this has a lot. Yeah, I mean, this is this is, uh, this piece has a lot to be proud of um, from, I don't know, the paper clip even. I wanted to know, you used to use your icon guy a little bit more than you do now. Um, what is the story behind him, this little guy down here? Yeah, so that's that's Pencilhead. He's Pencilhead. got a little name I made, yeah. He is, um, 
it gets back to the creative pain. He is that manifestation of the creative process. He is that that joy of the the trial and error that you have to trust the process in order to get through whatever creative endeavor you're doing. Yeah. Um, so he is he is that he has a pencil going through his head, but he's got a smile on his face. And he is just a creative looking to create something new. Um, now, that's something that you also, I know, post a lot onto your socials is trust the process. Yeah. Where do you feel that comes most into your personal workflow? Oh, man. It, you know, the, the breakthrough that I had was realizing that you're always going to have trial and error. You're always going to have a project that where you're stumped and you're like, I don't know how I'm going to get this done. I don't know what time I'm going to manifest to make this happen. But if, if this is your profession, you know you have to get through that. You have to push through it and there's break that. Trust the process. Understand that you have staples in front of you, such as I'm going to sketch. I'm going to present these. I'm going to get these narrowed down. I'm going to, if, if not, I'm going to mood board. And you're going to do that all over until you finally get to that destination, which if you trust it and you understand that there is um, mistakes to happen, I think you're you're more lenient on yourself to get through it. Right. Um, and that actually brings us to a, a great segue into one of our, uh, our segments called Burnout. Well, obviously, burnout and uh, creative block is something that all artists have to uh, approach at some point in their career. Sometimes for some people, it's on a daily process. Uh, I know you spoke of creating mood boards or kind of diving into the work. Is there anything in particular that you feel is uh, exceptionally reliable when it comes to um, breaking through burnout or creative block? Yeah, uh, I am um, sketching. If if you can find the time, and for me, this works. Like I, I always have multiple sketchbooks. I even try to draw on an iPad when I can, but I always love pencil and paper. And whenever I can get that time and just doodle with no like goal in mind other than to like, let's just flesh out an idea that I've, I've had, or let's look through all the things that I've bookmarked and like, what's inspiring there. Why did I bookmark this? Ask those yeah. questions and then just doodle. And then nine times out of 10, whenever I'm having fun illustrating, I'm just looking through that sketchbook for ideas. Like, Oh, forgot about this one. And I date it. And it's like, that was two years ago. Let's do this. <laughs> Yeah, brilliant. I mean, I, um, I, I'm trying to always find the best place to bookmark and curate all of my inspiration. It's kind of spread out all uh, uh, beyond a bunch of different social um, media websites or, or resource tools. So it's always really interesting to hear how people kind of have their stuff organized and, and, and cut down. Um, I know you spoke to actually going and just getting into your sketchbook. Uh, we can actually hop right on in also into our next segment. Let me see your sketchbook. Ooh, let's see your sketchbook. So you were kind enough to put together this wonderful PDF for us, um, which is uh, has pencil head right on the front. By the way, guys, you can make sure you can check out the creative pain dot com um, or the creative pain on various social media uh, like Behance or Instagram. But uh, you have your concept sketches with various ideas from sketch to phase to final. And uh, we wanted to go ahead and check out these. I know we were talking a little bit earlier about this wonderful um, uh uh, a cereal box, but it's great to see it kind of in its beginning phases. What made you actually end up moving away from the microphone or the box, like opening up into the the canvas? Yeah, that that's one of those where typically time, typically time is that factor of, all right, am I overthinking this or, or maybe I should just dial it back? Because there was an iteration of playing with that whole I don't know, mystical glow coming out of the top and the cereals kind of flying around. And I think if I can remember, it became too vertical for what I was trying to do. And and then I just immediately was like, ah, maybe I'm pushing it too much. I, I just focus on the box rather than this other stuff. Um, you know, looking back, I think the microphone would have still been a great addition to it. But yeah, I think time time's typically that factor. Now, do you t uh, typically sketch with a just a pencil? Yeah, typically. Now, do you prefer mechanical or do you tend to go towards like a different weighted sort of pencil? Uh, just a mechanical. Nothing, nothing special at all. I think it's like a little bic. 
Yeah. Oh yeah, just so good <laughs> old basics. Um, yeah. And then can you tell us a little bit about these ginger snaps off off to the left? Yeah. So that's that's another one where uh, my my girlfriend actually bakes a lot and she created these ginger snaps and it was around the holiday and it was just joking. It's like, Oh, these are, these are awesome. Like I could see these being a little brand mm -hmm. and I was just doodling once and we might've been watching some, some TV show that, that had like a, a lot of fifties style references in it. And yeah. there was a lot of branding I was seeing that was like on a newsstand and stuff. I was like, Oh, that's pretty cool. And then I thought about what is that style? Like how hard is that style to really achieve? And, and that's where the little girl came from that's in that ginger snaps. And I was like, oh, we'll just make this like a vintage cookie box and then go from there. Now, do you tend to um, isolate yourself when you're creating work? Or for the most part, would you find yourself sitting in front of the TV or like listening to a podcast while you're working through different stuff? Uh, when I'm actually on the computer working, it's it's usually isolated. I'm up, up here in, in a room and hours at time but i i definitely have something in the background either music or podcast or sometimes tv shows and and movies just for noise yeah yeah well i also uh know that you included this final piece of the ginger snaps which is beautiful uh you ended up really extending it and having this um flurry of flowers coming around the sides what inspired that this one got back to what are once I got there and I, I think I got to this concept of the box pretty quick and I was like, all right, well, that that was fast. <laughs> and it was like, well, what else could we do to, to really bring it? And and I was looking at a lot of inspiration that used these vines and and I was messing around with custom brushes and I was like, ah, well, we could probably bring that into this and it would make sense to tell that story. And and I've been trying to get into these pieces where they tell a little bit more stories. And, and, and I think it gets back to the typography treatments we were talking about. Right. How do we enhance an illustration so it's just not an illustration? Now it's a concept. And and I wanted this to, to feel that way. And and I think it it brought that vintage retro style I wanted even further. Absolutely. I can definitely see this, uh, to your point, somewhere back in the 50s, mm -hmm. uh, but in a way where you look back at the 50s and you're like, oh, wow, that's really cool stuff. The other thing I really noticed about this piece is the choice of color for the blue, the blue to really add that extra edge because it's mm -hmm. not anywhere else in the piece. Um, and I think that is a really cool divider of a way to say this is the main, yep. you know, it's like goal posts and it says this and this is like focus here and then everything else is just additional information. Yeah, that's totally it. Um, you also included some uh, Ghostbusters love here. Now, um, is Ghostbusters one of your favorite movies uh, or is this kind of just you like the character style? Uh, this is it's definitely one of my favorite movies. Uh, funny enough, I was I was on an airplane ride and mm -hmm. Ghostbusters 2 was on. Yeah. And I was like, oh, well, I could turn this on and, and make this a moment of sketching. And I was like, look never got to illustrate something of ghostbusters this is now force myself yeah uh, would you say then, you like ghostbusters one or two more uh i don't know ghostbusters one probably yeah that, i mean it's the classic it's the origin yeah yeah the origin story <laughs> yeah <laughs> <laughs> um, now I, I, this seems like it's a hardbound sketchbook. Do you uh, have a preference of any sort of sketchbook in particular? Do you like moleskins? Do you like the ones from artists and craftsmen? Um, do you have any selection or is it just as long as it's paper, you're happy? Uh, arts and craftsmen ones are pretty good. Uh, it's really, I go for like a hardbound. So like, this is, this mm -hmm. is that same sketchbook, right? So oh, very cool. Just and you have a uh, pencil heads brother on there as well. <laughs> yeah, I do. A whole bunch of them. It's cool. Um, holographic uh, stickers on there. I always love a good sticker. I have a yeah. weird sticker collection, but I don't put the stickers on anything. I just have them in a bag. So I don't know what oh. that means. I, <laughs> I'm I'm so weird about stickers, too. I'm surprised that I even applied them to that book. I think I just like happened to do it because I'm like a, a hoarder when it comes to them. I collect them. It's like, oh, even as a kid, I had a binder full of skateboard stickers that I didn't yeah. want to use. But I would look at them. <laughs> right. And it's like, I have these. I'm not yeah. going to apply them to anything. <laughs> yeah. You're like getting all old and crusty, but I still have them still. Right. <laughs> uh, here's the final piece of your, your Ghostbusters. I love that you incorporated the hot dogs by the time you got mm -hmm. to the end. I know hot dogs is actually another piece of um, repetitive imagery that you have throughout a lot of your pieces. Um, and they add a little bit of fun uh, element mm -hmm. to it. 
I love that you uh, not only have it on the bottom here, but you can also kind of see the see through and you have this extra layer here. Mm -hmm. um, when you're working on something like this, are you working in layers of the idea of like, you just get down the basic shapes and then you go in front and back with opacity yeah. layers? Or is it kind of something in the idea where you just go bottom up and you can do all the math in your head? <laughs> <laughs> uh, it it does depend for okay. this one i i illustrated the entire slimer character first and then when i was positioning the hot dogs on top i i sort of noticed where they were going to overlap certain pieces that were important and then i just kind of like redrew them or, or copied them and then put them on top and then i started layering from there in my right. uh, layers file but um for this one i i ultimately flattened it so those hot dogs that are in his stomach are actually green and a lighter tan and stuff like that. So I started tweaking it rather than oh, just really? okay. opacity on it. Yeah. I mean, that's mm -hmm. tough because that can easily go south very quickly. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, but also the difference that you have in the hands here with the lighting is really nice, um, especially how this one has this light neon green with the mm -hmm. white highlight. And then back here, you kind of have this sense of depth, even though it's very flat. Um, and it just turned out really nice. Thank you. Um, then we have the uh, Puff Man, uh, which it has a different vibe to it, honestly, mm -hmm. even though they're of the same series. You can tell that they're connected, but um, in a different way. Uh, and then, of course, you have your little shiny guys on the side, of course. Yeah. <laughs> Make them all jolly, you know. Um, here's another piece that you have. I know that in your final pieces, you also kind of have this manifestation of this mm -hmm. uh, sandwich that you've bitten into. Are yeah. these just things that you were eating and you're drawing while you're eating? Uh, th this is a great example of what I was saying earlier with just sitting on the couch or just where I'm at, like just draw. I mm -hmm. More than likely, because there's so many random things on this page, I was probably going through a burnout. So that's how I can tell. Cause it's all random. I'm just thinking, I'm looking at like mood boards and things that I've pieced together in the past. And I'm just like, ah, oh, like here's something. I'll just draw it real quick. Cause typically when I, when I get it on the page, I know I can get back to it. Um, just getting it out is, is one of those. And yeah, that small PB and J became a bigger piece. You'll see. I'm going to see if I can grab it too while we're talking here. Um, but uh, I know I also noticed that you have this uh, bookmark here and you have a few other ones yeah. popping out. Is that just when you're kind of going back and maybe this is for the PB and J you wanted to identify that that's one you wanted to come back to? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Whenever I get in the phase of like, all right, we're about to go on, on Illustrator or Photoshop to make something, I'll typically flip back through and it's like, oh, this is actually really good. Like I was saying, some of these are a year or two years old sketches. So, I have to put some sort of indicator. Otherwise, I'll just, ah, eh, that's nothing good. But I'll, I'll put a little marker there. Now, is this the the one that it turned into? Or it, was that a different PB&J that kind this, of? This that? is yeah. this is part of it. Yeah, this some of these illustrations, I'm able to get maybe three versions of it. Mm -hmm. And if it's simple enough, I'll explore all three. And this is one of those three that I was like, all right, deconstruct it, make it feel all like textbook like. That would be funny. Um, yeah, with yeah. the figure, you know, figure J, <laughs> yeah. figure PB, B1 and B2. <laughs> um, the uh, the texture that you have going on here for the actual materials of the jelly and the peanut butter is really profound. It has Thank so you. much detail to it. Um, how did you come up with the light sources and the texture for that? Did you reference out like a... a I don't even know how you would because it's like not even realistic, but it's enough that I understand that it's realistic. Yeah. Um, how, how do you approach something like that? That's that's one that that accumulated over time. And I think most artists that I've heard, they talk about like, how do you get that style? Or those are the questions that people ask. And and I, I guess that's kind of mine kind of manifesting over years of doing it and then realizing what I like and what I like to see and and that's just a subtle noise gradient or gradient mixed with a uh, just a, a texture. Um, and I layer them in ways of using different colors for the texture. So whenever you put them all those all those layers on, they kind of make this hyper realistic look, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, it's it's got that swirl factor to it uh, with. But then you also kind of have this uh, light source that's coming from above that comes in mm -hmm. and diffuses it. So it kind of just uh, 
uh, fades away. Also, hello to um, Ali in the uh, chat. Good to see you. If you have any questions for Tyler while we're here, please let us know. Um, and then one other question I have about this piece is that it's uh, kind of set on an isometric grid. Is that all just something from your sketches or do you use like a, a feature of sorts where you kind of transform it into isometric after you've already built out the base layers? Uh, I, I love illustrating in perspective and typically that's something if I could sketch it and I know it's going to be in perspective, I, I won't even mess with sketching it in perspective because I know it's going to go there yeah. and it saves so much time because drawing it by hand sometimes i'm just like oh this looks too too weird like this is a mess so right. um whenever i see opportunities of making perspective i like to build it and it honestly it keeps me on my toes because when you start playing with like circles and weird shapes that are squiggles in perspective man that's that's like a fun puzzle for me uh then this is the other piece that you yeah. had out of the actual uh, skip piece it reminds me um a lot. I'm trying to think of the children's book that I used to read. Um, I'll have to find it off, send it over to you. Yeah. But it was like these weird, it was like a candy box. And then inside the candy, there was a bunch of gross stuff on the inside. Um, <laughs> I'll have to send it your way because it, it has a, a almost a gross factor to it, but also yeah. a delicious factor to it. Yeah. Um, although, is this a is this a hair we have? Over oh, yeah. Here? Oh, yeah. yeah. That's, that's that nice. right there. That's the the anchor in my work. It's like, don't take yourself too serious. <laughs> <laughs> um, you're, you're making a PB and J, and you're trying to make it look real, but it's not really that realistic. Yeah. Right. <laughs> um, but it turned out great, and it's cool to see the two of these, and also see how it's kind of collapsed. Did you mm -hmm. reuse different assets for when this was here? Like, did you, were you able to just bring it down, or did you create it all from scratch again? So I I elaborated on it more. So you mm -hmm. see, like what's illustrated here there is like um the jelly does go the border of the bread because i right. essentially duplicate the bread for each of those layers and i just you know modify it to look like you know a jelly or, or peanut butter um but when i had to separate it i had to go back in and put more highlights and put more little details but it was like maybe 20 30 minutes extra mm -hmm. Oh, I mean, it looks great. Uh, it's a, a nice solution for it. Mm -hmm. uh, and then, yeah, you do have some characters here. You have uh, the Nevermore hat store, which is really cute. Um, was there anything else in particular that you wanted to highlight or talk about within your sketchbook? Yeah, yeah. So th these are actually great to, to bring up because whenever you have those, um, what is it, Inktober concepts mm -hmm. where you have like 30 so days to, to draw something and each day you do something different. Uh, I always like to bring those up because those are moments that I even find very exciting and and honestly moments of like refining my style and putting those parameters on me to where it's you only have so much time, which time's always the problem. And then you also, yeah, you if you want to explore like a new style, for, for instance, with this one, I wanted to explore that um, old old school newspaper illustration style. So I, I put that parameter on there and then. Every day I was creating one of these vector um, concepts, I'm trying which to turned into a poster. In a little bit more for it. Um, but these are all fake brands that you kind of mm -hmm. came up with and um, had to. Uh, oh, wait, let's see. Let's get there. It is there. Okay, cool. Uh, with Franken loops and a stuck you ectoplasm glue. <laughs> <laughs> um, which one of these is your favorite? Oh man, crispy treats was a fun one. Yeah. And and probably sinful spirits. Sin okay. Sinful spirits is one of those where, oh, this is it gets back to that concept. Oh, this is a nice concept. And this could be an ad. Uh -huh. uh, especially from I don't know what time period. It was like 1800s, it feels like, or something. I don't know. It's so but with old. all with phone numbers somehow still. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Don't 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 look too far into that. <laughs> Um, now, is that your favorite because of how it turned out or because of the process when you were creating it? I think the way it turned out, because it's got depth and again, it's got the perspective. I love working in perspective. So I was able to get that in there. And then it really was able to push the halftones in ways that the other ones maybe weren't as strong. Mm -hmm. um, just how do you create depth with a flat illustration? Well, yeah. halftones help, but it's halftones are tricky sometimes. Oh yeah, no, they can be a, a, a 
accent or they can actually be pretty detrimental if they're not mm -hmm. well done just to the best finesse um i think my favorite of this one probably would be the full moon space dust stout just because i like the uh, barrel and i like the little plug that you have in the side um <laughs> And it's also it's it's so different from all of the rest, but you don't really notice it unless you're kind of like scanning through and you find it. Mm -hmm. um, so that's successful in in, in its own way. Thank also, the headless horseman's great, but that's just because I like the headless <laughs> horseman. So, um, also have another one of these really. You, your food makes me very hungry. I mean, your um, <laughs> your 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 work does, even if it has a hair on it or you know, <laughs> yeah, a, a pencil driven through it. <laughs> yeah this this is another one i i actually did this one on adobe live uh, a few years ago um so there's, right there. there's a there's a process out there of of creating this one live so it's Go not all smoke and mirrors yeah it's, <laughs> it's definitely fun um then we have this lemon squeeze mm -hmm. a little bit darker um it feels like the pain and terror kind of came out uh between <laughs> yeah. the sketch and the piece it feels a little bit more um <laughs> consensual with it mm -hmm. with it over here whereas this one they feel a little bit more tortured which is funny oh yeah um, <laughs> but i love the the angled uh, uh slices here as well that you decided to incorporate as long with the seeds kind of mm -hmm. all broken up um a, a nice callback almost to fruit ninja you yeah. know circa 2009 totally <laughs> uh and then we have like two more right we have the the black keys uh, which this is a very different sketch from all mm -hmm. the ones that you've had up until this point. This is more of a digital sketch. Yeah. Um, and I, I think it's interesting that it, you sketched it all in blue, but then it switched out to these very green and pink uh, contrasty mm -hmm. colors. Um, what was the also didn't I love you is very funny down here. Um, what was the decision for this color choice? Uh, so that color choice was was primarily due to the album. So that mm -hmm. album had a very distinct uh, theme and color palette to it. Okay. Um, that was the the recent album they came out with, Dropout Boogie from, from last year. Um, so that kind of dictated it right out the gate. I knew it was gonna be these real highlight poppy looking colors. Right. Um, but the sketch is, is really a good, good call out because I think whenever it's back to presenting to clients when it's not my personal stuff, the illustrations like that typically work way better and it's cleaner and it works great for mock -ups. So that's always a little nice little piece of insight that helps. Right. Um, and then final to um, close it out was one that I actually brought up to you right before we went live. Uh, which is one of my favorites, which is you better watch your back. And it's this adorable little cowboy that um, is not your buddy pal. So <laughs> this almost feels a little bit inspired um, by like Fallout or kind mm. of like a, um, I don't even know, Disney cartoons from the, the mid 1900s. Yeah. Uh, and yeah. this was you uh, experimenting with type, right? Mm hmm. Yeah. Yeah. This is, this is very much in that uh, like steamboat Mickey kind of concept. Uh, but yeah, I, I had this idea of like, I wanted to do this little cowboy and I, and I've been seeing a lot of examples of like throwbacks and, and I think it might've been either Arby's or Wrangler, one of those brands way back when they first started, I think had a little like icon that was like this little boy, he's like had chaps <laughs> and a cowboy hat on. It's like, just imagine this guy just being like a com complete bad boy. Like he's like, you better watch your back boy. And I was like, that would be funny. And just the cutest little illustration, but some mysterious type to question his character. Um, um, I think you have some it. great choices here with the overlapping of here and the offset path that you have kind of taking mm. over top of the your back and the choice to not have the outline of the black on there. Mm -hmm. And it's just having a white outline is such a strong choice um one question i have for you from the process between sketchbook and final is this one seems like the one that you really referenced and went off of when it mm -hmm. came to the final piece do you normally scan it in or do you recreate it from scratch just based off of analyzing your sketchbook uh i i use like this picture take a picture with my phone throw it in there and i'll use it as a reference but typically whenever i'm working in vector 
it's so much easier to make things consistent. So I, yeah. I, I use that completely. So it's like, all right, well, here's a general idea. And I always like to have that sketch in the file as right. like a, a reference if I ever open it again. Um, otherwise it might get lost in my sketchbook, but, uh, typically it's just rebuilding it, but I'll use it as a general guideline. <laughs> yeah. And then, uh, last question before we move on from your sketchbook, um, is, are you good at filling up sketchbooks or do you buy a bunch of sketchbooks and only fill out the first half? Uh, I typically stick to a sketchbook until it's finished, Teach but I, me accumulate, how. I Teach accumulate me your ways. sketchbooks though. <laughs> um, um i don't know i i i usually get gifts where there's sketchbooks in it and so i have a pile of unused sketchbooks that i'll i don't know if i'll ever get to but uh you talked about sketchbooks earlier you know something i am picky about is the paper yeah uh, if if the paper doesn't feel right when i'm drawing on it i don't use it so there's just, plenty of sketchbooks with one page missing and that's never going to get used you like you just tried it out and you're like mm -hmm. it's, it's not that's not it man it's trash <laughs> <laughs> um well moving on we, i want to go on to our next segment and uh it kind of goes along i guess with the idea of um your resources and the things that you have around you um is uh would love to go ahead and just kind of see your collections and what inspires you around you um so you were kind enough to send us over a, a bit of a studio tour so let's go and uh let's check that out um, could I see your collection? So this is your studio. Um, it's cool. You have those big mirror uh, closet doors you have, but um, you have the big lights. Do you tend to stream as well? Yeah, yeah. So I I, I mentioned earlier, whenever uh, typically with Adobe, I'll, I'll do some streams or I've done some with uh, Wacom and other things like that. And honestly, I want to get into it more on my own. It's just one of those where time time is the problem for me <laughs> but i do enjoy streaming uh, um and uh i see that you have a big uh whack uh, it's a, is it a wacom right there mm -hmm. yeah yeah so that's that's literally right here down below me yeah yeah and, and so you uh, generically just are, are using your um stylus and mm -hmm. then um just kind of having it as a dual monitor Mm -hmm. uh the one thing i am interested about here is uh this tufted computer off to the side what was the story behind this guy <laughs> yeah that's um that's actually a fun little piece i i created that a while back but you did that's you you, you i didn't, I didn't make i didn't that. make the poster though <laughs> or okay. um, the actual rug it's a rug is what it is right um but i i outsourced that to to this guy that i met on instagram and he's he's really good so he was able to whip that up from an icon I made. That's fantastic. That's really cool to have. Um, mm -hmm. Obviously, it doesn't belong on the floor. It belongs on the wall, <laughs> no. the gallery of everything else. <laughs> um, you also have these large drawers down here um, mm -hmm. and this cutting area. Do you find yourself doing a lot of physical printed work? Uh, not as much as I would want, but mm -hmm. I I do love it. I It reminds me of going going to school, and that was one of the my favorite things. And design class was presenting and cutting out mat boards and and getting overlay sheets on top of your work and every time i get an opportunity I, i'd like to cut out some diy stuff for mock-ups yeah no it's a, a memory of mine of um extreme anxiety and extreme joy because <laughs> normally i was cutting things out about 30 minutes before it was due mm -hmm. um two doors down uh and a bunch of other design students were also in the room <laughs> trying to use the same cutting boards uh yep. so it's a, a love-hate relationship uh you have a lot of skateboards on your wall do you skateboard yourself or have you skateboarded in the past or do you just like yeah 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 like I, I i skateboarded a lot when i was growing up and and in my teens um i kick around these days i don't get to, to skate as much as i would want um but it's it's a huge influence for design. Um, I had this whole moment of clarity of probably and like eight years ago, where mm -hmm. I was trying to figure out why I like the things I like and the design and the aesthetic choices and and it honestly dated back to skateboarding for me. I realized that I collected the stickers. <laughs> I didn't I didn't use them on the skateboard generally. But I love the graphics. I love the tags. I kept tags. I kept the, the packaging of the bearings and all the labels. And it was something I felt like it was worth something I didn't want to throw away. 
Right. And I think the worth there was, well, the visuals and the typography and the t-shirts are so unique in that culture. Uh, so it's, it's something I, I still love to collect and, and reference in a lot of my stuff. So on the right, um, you have Shepard Fairey, uh, mm. or at least something inspired by Shepard Fairey. And yep. then on the left, uh, it's some sort of Western. Um, but it, d is that actually a signed deck or is that just yeah. kind of done with the design? Yeah, yeah. So that's that's a Jason Lee board. Um, you might know he's he's an actor, too. Jason Lee was in, um, what is it, Earl? Is it better called? What is it? Um, oh, my God. I remember that being yeah, a big show, yeah. but I never watched it. But yeah, it was so like that, huge. It won all these awards, I remember. Mm -hmm. So that he was his roots are in skateboarding and no way. yeah no way back, you know. yeah he still has his, his skateboard company and this is from his company it's called Stereo um, okay. but he would release some of these boards and they were signed and that's like one of my favorite boards too because it's this classic like Lone Star looking illustration uh -huh. so I was like I I have to have that. <laughs> uh, we just had a bunch of people uh, walk in as well so hello to uh, Java Hair uh, who says wow nice studio uh, hello to Andika. And RB, good to have you guys here. Uh, we're just going through Tyler's uh, studio right now and looking at a few things that inspire him. He is an illustrator and designer, and we're going through a lot of his work as well. So if you have any questions for him uh, as we're going through, by all means, start in the chat, and I will relay it for you. Um, looking more at some uh, more decks, we have uh, Tony Hawk Birdhouse, of course. Uh, mm -hmm. And then tell me a little bit about this Ween one. Um, yeah. To expand my mind. That one, that one's really cool because that that's by one of my favorite artists, Zoltron. I don't, I don't know. Zoltron, what a name! Yeah, yeah. It, look up his work. It, it's really good, and he he does a lot of these like very detailed illustrations, a ton of band posters and collaborations like that you would see on a skateboard. Um, but he he did this collaboration with the band Ween, which another one of my favorite bands. And um, I was like, that's that's a pretty cool board. You know what I mean? That's usually how I'm thinking about interning. I was like, oof, might have to get that. That's especially if it leans into more of an illustrated piece where it's like, all right, that's that's a piece of art. I want to see how that's made. I got to see it in person. All right, let's get it. <laughs> now, have you ever designed your own board and, and no. had it like printed out? Man, that's that's on the list. I have a list of like, you know, manifest it. Uh, I want a skateboard. Yeah. Yeah, I, awesome. I, I I don't even know where you would go for that. I'm sure there's some online service where you could get it printed, but mm -hmm. it, it would also be such a commitment, you know? Yeah. Um, we also have uh, Skate Mental and uh, Toy Machine. Mm -hmm. uh, was Toy Machine actually drawn on top or was that bought uh, in, in that way? So that that's uh, Ed Templeton, which is the, the guy who created Toy Machine and was a skater too. I got to meet him and I had that board and he signed it and then started doodling on it and i was like freaking out i was like oh my god <laughs> this is the coolest thing in the world and he was just like just having a, a fun time drawing on it and i was like dude thanks and i was just talking to him while he was drawing on it but um definitely one of my prizes i was like that's that's an awesome experience for me and then skate mental feels very uh hungry caterpillar for me uh mm -hmm. just with that collage style which is really nice it's pretty cool it, it's one of those where it's like graphic design doesn't have to be on a computer. And yes. it's a realization of that. It's like you, if you can make it, make it. If you can make it in reality, it's it's going to show in the end result. And this is one of those where it's like, I'm pretty sure that was made like with boxes. And then they took a picture of it. And it's like, that's cool. And it's Eric Costin, which is another great skater. <laughs> <laughs> it's funny. I remember a lot of the names from mm -hmm. like the Tony Hawk uh, video games, which is funny. Yeah. Uh, uh, and then they also remade it and added more skaters recently. And so uh, it's Very like I, I recognize names, but uh, never was a big skateboarder myself. Tried to. Didn't work. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I tried and I didn't. I never learned how to ollie. So it was like, what's the point? <laughs> oh. <laughs> We got to get you back on it, man. Yeah. Oh, no, I'd break something now. I'm, I'm certain of it. Um, and then these are very different from the ones that we've looked up uh, to this point. Um, one is really cool to see this one kind of black on black on the left. Um, mm -hmm. And then on the right, it's more of a photo piece that is yeah. um, uh, different from the different inspirations that you have. How come you have these ones? Uh, so the the one on the left, that's that's Rodney Mullen. So that's one of his pro models from, from back in the day. So it's a reissue of like the classic boards from... I would assume that was like from the seventies um, and it's framed and I was able to get it signed. And that one, that one's in a nice little glass box. But That's very cool. Really great skater influential for me. And then the one on the right is 
uh, a board that was issued f- with girl skateboards, but it was with um, Spike Jones. Um, oh, wow. Okay. So yeah, the, the film director and, and that's of the Beastie Boys, which is another like tie into everything. It's like, oh. yeah, you have such a convergence of mm-hmm. um, Hollywood and music and skateboarding all yeah. together in skateboards, which is cool to see. Yeah, yeah. So that that was the behind the scene photo of the sabotage video from Beastie Boys, if you know that one. Uh, that's oh, when wow. they were getting the cop uniforms on. <laughs> <laughs> it's pretty funny. Uh, and then last but not least, um, we have just a shot of your gallery wall. We have some mm. Adventure Time. Um, these adorable little guys. I, I, I recognize these. Um, yeah, you, you probably do. It's um, very common artist, uh, Mike Mitchell. Do you know him? Mike Mitchell? Yes, I met so him good. once at a really? convention. Uh, oh. Very nice guy. Uh, That's awesome. But he also do- has done like different stuff with, I think, Star Wars, too. Really? Um, yeah. Star Wars guys. Oh, I haven't um, met and then, him of yet. Course, you have pencil head down here. Um, yeah. But in a different style, which is your kind of mm-hmm. Steamboat Willie style down here as well. Mm-hmm. Um, what's the Adventure Time from? So that Adventure Time is uh, Mike Mitchell, too. Yeah, oh, he, is it really? He a, yeah, he did a collaboration with Cartoon Network and Adventure Time and uh, loved the poster and the concept. I, I just I couldn't get over. It. I was like, oh, that is like a yearbook page straight out of school. That is so fun. Um, and it's a screen print, which I was impressed with because... Oh, very. I cool. wouldn't. I wouldn't assume that would be a screen print based on the the style. Yeah. But um, yeah, huge fan of him, and now I'm jealous. You you got to meet him. I, I haven't ever met him, but he's he's really cool. Yeah, I mean, it's just all over the internet too, you know. Mm-hmm. Um, which is just like such a curse and blessing at the same time. You know? <laughs> totally. <laughs> yeah. Uh, and then who do we have on the right? Uh, to the right besides is... the devil, obviously. <laughs> We have the devil right here. He's, he's, he's on the wall. Uh, that is done by, what is the print studio? I'm, I'm probably going to get it wrong. I think it's Bahali or something like that. But it's it's a print studio. I think it's maybe out of Tennessee. But they did like some, some artist release of uh, just some internal stuff. And I was like, that's a fun poster. And very simplistic. And saw it on Instagram. And I was like, all right let's let's get that one it's a really big one too it's huge print well thank you for showing us around your studio though um you obviously have lots of inspiration 360 around you um (laughs) whoever is saying uh (laughs) it's the devil that's the devil also welcome uh to wade thank you for uh hopping in here wade it's good to see you wade's another streamer um and creator here on behance uh Speaking of all this different inspiration and things that uh, really inspire you, I think it'd be a great time to hop into Art Talk, which is our segment when we're talking about um, ways that uh, you get inspiration through other artists. And we kind of talk about how art isn't created in a vacuum. We are the product of different things that we absorb. So let's hop on to uh, Art Talk. So first up, we have um, Daniel McKay or uh, or Mackey. Um, and these are ones that I've actually also seen. I'm a big fan of a uh, very cartoon style inspired by a lot of popular culture, but really dragged into a different style than the ones that are of their original creation. Um, why did you pick this one as the first one you mentioned when I asked about inspiration? Yeah, that's this. This is like my go-to. I, like, if there's a style that I aspire to to accomplish or try to get towards, is this like it just brings me joy. I, I love the colors. I love the the approach of a lot of classic nostalgic characters like this. And this this guy is just like a, a master at, at depicting that motion and and that feeling that I used to get from those shows. Yeah. Um, and yeah, his style is fun. It's all over the place and it's consistent at the same time. His color choices are, I don't know, how would you describe that color palette? Because it's, if you scroll through, it's all like very similar, but it's all very similar. It's mm-hmm. all very intentional. Um, I mean, these are, ones are a little bit different with, um, they're kind of neon or not even neon, like, like, like weird poorly saturated. printed, yeah. um, but intentionally, obviously. Um, it's 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 something that I've I've actually used his work as reference before to try mm-hmm. to get something similar and I just can't 
pull it off. It's <laughs> it's good. It, yeah. It's own beast. Mm -hmm. Like I love that Mr. Krabs down there. So and good. It's also cool. He does all these different series of the same show. Mm -hmm. um, another thing I like about his work a lot is his ability to take a 3D space uh, and turn it into uh, a 2D plane that yeah. feels a little, you know, believable. Mm -hmm. um, and so they have Monkey Ball. Uh, great game on the GameCube that they just never really were able to come back from. Uh, <laughs> I, I never but, played that one, but yeah, that's the levels and the, the characters in that game look fun, though. Exactly. Oh, Kara Sykes, welcome to the chat. Good to see you. We had Kara on, um, I think, two days ago. Uh, another great nice. illustrator who you uh, might have seen around the Internet as well. So thank you for coming on in. If you have any questions for Tyler, please let us know. Right now we are in our inspiration art talk segment of the show where we talk about some of Tyler's inspirations. Uh, and we're looking at Daniel Ma uh, Mackey uh, with some really great stuff. But I know you sent over a few, so I want to at least make sure we um, can uh, give proper credit to all the ones that you uh, use as a inspiration um and the next we have up is marat call uh Kalkovin. um and you want to talk a little bit about this work yeah th this is another one of those where it's typically if there's a style that it's just pleasing to the to the eye and, and there's a lot of different variations to his work but i think is the way he handles his characters are so fun and, and just weird and I like and I like the weirdness of it um but overall it, I just really enjoy going through his work and a lot of his scenes and and also the takes that he'll he'll merge with maybe some pop culture or video games is is always nice um yeah like the buy item mm -hmm. situation over here yeah this makes me want to like oh what would that look like in a different style it's like let's just create a pop-up window all of a sudden uh-huh cool uh, you yeah, also just... mentioned um, Mike Tabby, which I'm going to go ahead and pull up his thing as well. Um, now, for most of these, uh, have you spoken to any of these artists before or these are ones you kind of just um, enjoy from afar? Uh, yeah, I, I speak to them um, through like Instagram, but it's, you know, I don't know them personally. Um, right. But I definitely try to to make it. And I was like keep this coming <laughs> like this is awesome work you know always try to throw some support out there um, see now hat creek here feels I, similar to me to um another one you actually have pinned on your own um which was uh, how do we go creative pain um or i guess the creative pain go um let's see here Yes, your Krispy Kreme donuts coffee, I feel like, can kind of uh, have an allusion to Hat Creek. I can see the, mm -hmm. the connection. They don't feel like they are the same, but they yeah. feel similarly inspired, which is cool to see. Um, uh, out of the ones that I guess are on uh, Mike's more recent pieces, do you have a favorite? Uh, man, there's the, the gorilla shirt. I think you scrolled right there. Yeah, this guy. That is brilliant I, like, <laughs> I i see that as like i need to make pocket tees only with hidden graphics like that is the cool thing ever. <laughs> well to show different stuff that you can kind mm -hmm. of pop down um yeah. and, and and reveal more it'd be also funny if you could have some sort of like narrative too to like the idea of like a comic or something at the top and on oh, the yeah. bottom um it'd be nice to see yeah yeah i think that'd be awesome uh then we have nick pile up in here. Oh yeah, Nick's work is is mind melting to me. Uh, I don't I don't know if they're actually done with markers or pens, but it's like whoa, <laughs> the color is insane. Oh, by the way, um, Kara is saying uh, for the previous one, I love the merch they did for the gorilla suit. Yes, absolutely. Um, so and good. Annika is always commenting on how she loves all the colors. I mean, a lot of the ones that you chose and you picked for your inspiration um, are very strong color pieces. Mm -hmm. um, and it's interesting because a lot of these are, are physical, as you said. Um, now, you mostly predominantly work uh, in a digital sense. Mm -hmm. Would you ever work with traditional means to create like an illustration with markers? Uh, I've... I've thought about the idea of, of recreating maybe something I would originally do on our in vector, just uh -huh. create it on a, some sort of art form. Um, 
but I, I don't know. I, I think it would still be personal pieces or maybe like an art series for myself. Um, probably no, nothing for client. Yeah, no, I get that. Um, and then the very last one that you have here is Sam Larson, uh, which I think Kara is actually going to really like. Um, <laughs> yeah. just because they it, once again you have this western theme that you mm -hmm. tend to really gravitate towards uh i guess cowboy at heart but yeah. um <laughs> it's from the south yeah i this 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 is beautiful um mm -hmm. just the uh, the little fish in the chemex yeah. um and then having all of these beautiful illustrations in the back um mm. what what made you choose this one uh well honestly it's it's different than anything that i typically do the textures and, and the hand drawn ink looking style. And, and I think a lot of the work that Sam does is on an iPad too. So it's, it's awesome to see what people are able to make with an iPad. I'm not brilliant on an iPad. I, I stick to this Wacom Cintiq, but man, it makes me want to go jump on one and, and just let loose. Yeah, I, I, I get that. I, I wish I was a little bit more, um, well versed with the iPad as well. I have iPad, but um, I always end up wanting my keyboard shortcuts um, mm -hmm, same. and my familiar uh, setup of just going back to this antique. So it's always inspiring to see other people able to make that jump. Uh, yeah. Kara saying, yes, Sam is so talented and not just digital, but actual physical work too. Mm. So that's great to see. We are about um, an hour into our uh, our show. We have about 20 or so minutes left. Um, I want to give you a little bit of a break, and I want to guide everybody else through some monkey paws, unless you would like to do them as well. Up to you. Yeah, let's do them. You want to do it? You want to be a part of it? All right. So I'll I do it. Can go ahead <laughs> and hop on into monkey paw. So Monkey Paws is uh, something that was tossed to me through Anna Davis Court. She is an immensely talented illustrator that also streams here on Behance, Adobe Live, and on Twitch. Um, you can check out her work just as Anna Davis Court as you look around. But it is a exercise with your hands to make sure that you prevent the likelihood of fatigue or of carpal tunnel. And it's just important to take care of your body because without taking care of your body, you are unable to do the artwork that you love and you don't want anything getting in the way of that. So it's very simple. You just um, reach out your hands uh, out front and you go ahead and you bring them in and you go, ooh, ooh, ah, ah. Ooh, ooh, ah, ah. Yeah, there you go. The, no the noises are very important. Otherwise it does not work. Uh, and so that's exercise one, you just see like that. Then you release and bring your hands down Bring them in. Ooh, uh, uh. You can feel them a little bit in your um, your wrist, but if it yeah. hurts by any means, do not um, do, do do not extend your overextend yourself. Um, I'm not a medical professional, so um, if it hurts, please stop. Uh, then you reach out over like this, and then you bring it in again. Ooh, uh, uh. Thank you, Kendall, for the noises. I appreciate you. Uh, and Paul, 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 monkey, 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 release. <laughs> Same to Clever and Annika. Thank you for the ooh ahs. And then last one is towards yourself. This is always the hardest one for me. Uh, and you bring it in. Ooh, uh, uh. And then you just want to shake it up. Uh, generally, we do these at least like twice. Um, you're also good to roll your neck a bit. Stand yeah, up, walk around if you can. Um, I mean, maybe not now because you want to watch the stream. Uh, but we'll just do four more. Or I mean, one more set of them. But um, so do one. And then two. Release. There we go. Three. All right. And four. Oh, that one always gets me. Always gets me. But the more you do it and the more you stick to it, um, the better you'll feel, the better it is for your hands. Uh, and it's just important. Take care of your body. Because like I said, if you kind of get carpal tunnel and then you're you're out of commission for a bit, you can't do your art. So um, just take care of your body. I mean, there's other ones that you can also go like this or whatever, but those always freak me out and I don't I don't do this. So anyway, this has been Monkey Paws. <laughs> Wait, did we even do the intro for Art Talk? I don't think we did. I just like hopped into it, didn't I? I think we did, yeah. Oh, we did. Okay, we did. Okay, cool, cool. cool. All right, I, don't All know. Right. I, got, I got nervous for a second. I got nervous, but we're fine. Um, one thing that uh, I would also like to hop into is just your kind of experience with um, 
Photoshop and creating work and uh, kind of see your process a little bit. Mm -hmm. And then we can talk a little bit um, about some features that are vital to your workflow. Do you want to hop into that? Yeah, yeah, we could do that. Cool. So I'm going to go ahead. I'm going to share your screen. Uh, you have this beautiful watch uh, pulled up. And um, I know that you uh, said this is a project that you're currently working on. Do you want to talk a little bit about uh, what this piece is and where it's going and what's it inspired by? Yeah, so this is uh, another one of those creative pain personal projects. Um, actually, I have the sketch in here. Back to what we were saying earlier, right? I always like to keep the sketch in here. So that's looks like a that's fruit roll of, up. Yeah, it really does. I never thought <laughs> a fruit of that. by the foot, I guess. <laughs> if I got one of those in a fruit roll up box, I'd be golden. Um, yeah, I had this idea of uh, creating this this um, like ambient floating watch, and the general direction is going to lead to after effects so i'm gonna animate the numbers and everything so they kind of pop and light up and make a little visual loop um but it started with this sketch and there was a little reference too i saw this too and i, I don't know who did this but i found it on pinterest and i was like this uh -huh. is really cool looking and it's like a little bit sci-fi and i love the colors and everything in it so that was kind of my inspiration to, to then draw this loosely based off like an apple watch but it, again, it brought in these um, opportunities to play with perspective in ways that are a little different than I've done in the past. So leading to what would be the first mock up here. And then now I'm just wow. at the point okay. of playing with it. And color. once again, you're using that color use um, similar mm -hmm. to the blue that we saw in the ginger snaps, but you here yeah. have your yellow, which is a, a cool technique that um, it really works for your work. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And, and, you know, it's sometimes it's trial and error because. I think in this this version, um, it's a little darker, and and I think that key lighting was was definitely something that worked. And then when I started switching to this blue, and I was like, well, should I go back to the key lighting or not? TBD, we don't know just yet. But I do think, like you said, you know, if this was that nice little highlight color that even could be this pink, you know, kind of brings a different view, viewpoint to it. Yeah. And then I also like you have pencil head there uh, in the bottom mm -hmm. right as well, kind of Tamagotchi style. <laughs> yeah, totally. Uh, I, I feel like he would maybe be a little hard on me, though. So I don't know if um, I would be <laughs> into having him on my wrist. <laughs> Just tells you to keep working harder. <laughs> yeah, right. Trust the process. <laughs> <laughs> Um, okay, but one of the things that we like to do here also um, is a segment that we call I didn't know that was there. What? I didn't know that was there. You mentioned that there were um, some key commands for the pen tool uh, yeah. efficiency that you'd like to share. So you, can you um, help us out there? Yeah. So if you if you switch to the pen tool, I always use just the keyboard shortcut, which is P on a Mac. Um, and whenever you start drawing this, and I hear a lot of mixed reviews about the pen tool. A lot of people hate it. A lot of people love it. Um, what do you, what about you? Do you, do you enjoy it? Oh, I live by it. I yeah. could never live without it. I, I forced myself to learn it and it was a little mm -hmm. bit of a learning curve. Um, but once it got there, I was so happy about it. it and I can't live without it. It's, it's a staple. I, I use it on every single project and it's, I don't get how anyone else doesn't use it as much. Uh, so what I wanted to show, though, is there's a couple different things that I learned from plotting these points. So this is typically what people would do, right? You you draw around and you eventually connect it, right? So right. what I found that helps is I use the shift key quite a bit. So when you hold the shift key, you see how it kind of snaps to a horizontal plane or it'll snap to a vertical plane. You see how that, that happens every time I click the... The shape right. key. So that helps if you wanted to, let's say, if you wanted to make the per perfect circle, it's essentially how you would do it. This is not going to be a perfect circle, but what we can do is we can perfect it by using the direct select key and arrow. We can move our plot plotted points around and then we can adjust each of these handles pretty easily like so. But let's say if you you understood the shape you wanted, but there's some weird hard angles in that shape. So what you can do is you can continue drawing and then you can click directly on that center and it will close that arrow. So now you have a straight 
plane to work with again. So you can kind of bounce back and forth between curves and right angles, which is really, really nice to do whenever you're creating custom shapes. So that's just something like I like to, to reference because a lot of people don't know that just by clicking on that, or let's say you want to create a point here, here, and here, but yet you want to change the angle. So if you hold option, you then get your curve tool so that you can readjust where that next point is going to go, which is yeah, that of that is pivotal to mm -hmm. anything that I ever mess with, just because so many times I want to take a hard turn and mm -hmm. uh, the system doesn't want me to. Um, yeah, but it, it's nice to to slap it back. This actually also works a lot in um, After Effects, very similarly as well. Um, mm. Some of it's more streamlined in uh, in Illustrator, I will say. Um, but a lot of the, these tools and tricks can also play over to the idea uh, of using motion graphics for it. Yeah, and you know, if if you're using this a lot, and again, this could be for illustrating or or logo design or any sort of build like that. Honestly, making typography, this is huge for. Um, let's say if we were doing a creating some weird T, because you're gonna find out that switching back and forth between these tools, if you're using your um, tool panel, you're gonna lose so much time, and it just helps to speed things up. I mean, and yeah. also you're cranking at work like nobody else, so you ain't got time to slow down. <laughs> <Thank you. laughs> yeah, it, it definitely comes into play there. Um, and then I know you were talking about using this to like modify type as well. Do you often feel like you're going in and outlining letters and, and making modifications to type? Yeah. Yeah. That, that happens a lot. And, and a lot of times I'll, um, <clears throat> I'll have a base font, right. And then creating that and making it your own, you have to get in there and be able to, to move those letters around. So that's where doing what we're doing here, we can make those slight adjustments to let's say, customize the type to fit within each of your shapes, like what we're doing here, which again, it it's just a time saver. And for those who, who may have never used it, definitely play around with some of the keyboard shortcuts because it, it makes the tool a little more um, enjoyable. And then you can Perfect. kind of bounce. Well, thank you for sharing. I really appreciate yeah. that. Now, um, as far as the watch piece goes, I know you have like multiple variations of it. Do you feel like you will end up just sticking to one or will you kind of continue to uh, develop multiple ones um, to kind of have as variations in the end? Um, I'll probably end up on one graphic version of it, probably yeah. one colorway. Uh, what I sometimes will do is let's say this was finished. Uh, I'll just grab all this, take it into Photoshop, throw some curve effects on it to just see what ifs, right? Like what if this was a little more saturated? What if, what if I did a, uh, a duo tone with these colors and I'm able to see it instantly, right? And, um, if there's something that, all right, that looks way better. Take a screen capture, save that as a JPEG, bring that back in illustrator, pull those colors. And then, oh, no way. So you bring it back into, yeah into yeah. back to illustrator so that it all kind of can still remain as a vector situation yeah, yeah. i i like to to keep that core shape and graphic as is like as pure as possible so there's less in between um because i've found out in the past whenever i've moved to photoshop at a certain point and flattened it and and i'm stuck there yeah once in a while it's like dang, I need to go back and change that type real quick and, and it's flat and I can't do it. So I always kind of keep a live version that's almost the exact same um, before I get into Photoshop. Brilliant. Uh, all right. So we have uh, about 10 minutes left or so. Um, and for the last, like, I kid you not, maybe 10 minutes, the entire time that we have been going through uh, this pen tool, mm -hmm. I've been on your Instagram just scrolling <laughs> and scrolling yeah. and scrolling and oh, scrolling. Man. I have never had anyone on this show with as much content on Instagram as you have. 
Uh, like, I keep well, scrolling and it just keeps, I'm like still in 2022 and it's absolutely dumbfounding. Okay. We finally got to the, the era of Instagram where uh -huh. um, there's the weird filters on top. So I feel oh, like yeah. we have gone far back enough. And that brings us to our best part of from this to that. From this to that. Obviously, every creative journey is part of uh, artist growth, every single thing you create. Um, and if you're like Tyler, you create one million things. Um, <laughs> I went ahead and I scrolled all the way down here. This is insane. I, I'm not I'm not even like excited. This is crazy. <laughs> um, you must have posted one thing every single day. Um, but this is from 2014. And this is a um, wrong person there we go uh this is a bluey blue ion um and you say introducing the worker now i can see and make some connections to pencil head here uh but what do you see in this work that you feel is still true about your own work now and what things do you think have changed a lot uh i think i still want that like uh, vault boy fallout style i still love it I, I still think there's something that's charming about it um yeah and again i i do when it's the personal work i, I do want something that selfishly brings a smile to my face or it's like oh that's fun you know it's like i want to create what i what i haven't seen yet and and right. I, I was doing it with this even though it's got a collage of inspirations and people that you know i i love to look at and, and bring into my work in some way but Whenever I'm able to narrow it down, it's like, all right, here's my little little wedge of myself creating something new. Uh, I think that still is in there because I remember making that and and the whole motive behind it was like, let's create this little pet boy guy that we could put on presentations. And it's like, right. oh, he would be like a little worker, right? Like, so this is a series of maybe, I don't know, it might have been five or six versions of like one where he's like standing still with his finger in the air, one where he's mm -hmm. like this. And this is the Running Man version, but um, you got little stickers of him as well. Yeah, it's kind of yeah. the precursor to anything that is. Um, also, I've always wanted to go to Dollywood. Um, <laughs> precursor to anything that is uh, pencil head, which is kind of mm -hmm. cool to see. Um, we also have him here uh, yeah. with a little bit more of a simplified version, um, yeah. which is always good to see. Horrible and, filter on top, though. <laughs> oh yeah, as I said, once we got back to the to the era where there was. Um, filters on top that's mm -hmm. when i was like okay we've made it back far enough yeah um i also love this uh line work that you have going on here and obviously mm -hmm. um now that i'm even pulling it up i can see that it's a crossover with the american flag which is um pretty beautiful um yeah but it's a very different from the style that you have up until i mean up, up till now you know now it kind of mm -hmm. also have this motif with lines again but a completely different uh vibe which is cool to see yeah um is there anything in your work that you kind of look back at and you're like, never again? Oh, man. Um, I think there's a, a point where I realized that there's moments of pushing it further. And yeah. it's not it's not finished right there, you know? And and I think looking back at this older stuff, it's like, oh, there's an idea that I, I think I was playing with, but it wasn't finished. And I don't think it was close to being finished. Um you know, again, we're, we're exploring a lot at this point in my life, I think with line art and a lot of like fat strokes and, and subtle shading. But I think going back, it's like, eh, eh it doesn't, it doesn't hold up into what I think is finished. Anymore. Okay. Yeah. But I mean, in, in, in your defense though, here it is, that this is all what, at what this point, 10 years old, right. Or mm -hmm. like eight years old. Yeah. Um, but I mean, this is, I, I really like the simplicity here. Um, uh, like the hops you have going on, right? Or yeah. or with the pine cone uh, shake reverse, which is funny. Um, and I like how it's also kind of uh, overset of something else and you take mm -hmm. different variations of it because this is back before you could do slides. Yeah, um, it really was. Cool <laughs> I forget about those little little characteristics that didn't exist. Also have your grid here with your pencil. Mm -hmm. Um but yeah, uh, also as an artist, do you feel like there's anything super important that you've learned in the last decade that um, you wish you could kind of tell to your younger self? Uh, yeah, you know, I wish I would have gotten into to more of the process sharing mm -hmm. sooner, which, 
Yeah, I don't harp on it too much because I didn't know the process as well, I feel like, as I do now. But I think there is something about sharing the process, no matter what stage of your creative career you're at, because there is someone that is at that same stage. Exactly. And I wish I would have been more proficient about sharing it and, and being more vocalized about it. Well, uh, it's funny to hear that you want to share anything more because I, I just, yeah. I mean, this, we're just scrolling, <laughs> scrolling and scrolling. And we can, just, I, could have, I could have started this five minutes ago. It would still run out of time before the time we get at the top. <laughs> um, and there were some reposts that I saw that you kind of do and you kind of redo mm -hmm. um, and getting it out there. But for the most part, the amount of just sheer content that you have just churned out and put in Instagram over the last few years has been insane. Yeah. A, a lot of it has been just for your own personal like enjoyment. Is that kind of how you wind down after a long day is you'll, you'll work on something. Yeah. 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 The majority of a good majority of this is personal for fun. And it's like exploring those ideas that I just feel like I'm never going to get that client is my mo mo motivation. It's like, Oh, if I keep waiting for that client to make the perfect enamel pen, I'll probably never get it. So like, let's just make it and then we can manifest it later. And honestly, a lot of this stuff that even far as down as where you were, um, it gets referenced in new clients and our new um, proposals of like, oh, well, we like what happened here. And it's like, oh, that thing, I think so <laughs> old, but OK, yeah, we could do that easily. And then we could push it into the way that I find a style that I think is fun. Um, I just I'm, yeah. I'm blown away that I, we are just still <laughs> scrolling and still going for it. Um, but thank you so much for taking the time to yeah. come on today. Is there anything that you're currently working on or you're kind of pushing uh, that you want people to keep an eye out for um, in the future? Uh, I mean, just, yeah, keep checking out the the Instagram and things like that. Constantly trying to, to bring in more tutorial videos and how to's uh, sharing more about that process and how we kind of get where we are on that final piece. Um, yeah, just stay tuned for that. Great. Well, thank you so much for yeah. coming on. It was a pleasure to have you back. Thank you. Um, obviously, I you said you were on earlier with another Derby Live. Make sure you guys check that replay. You can see the grilled cheese, which is cool. Yeah. Um, but uh, it was a pleasure and it was really cool. Thank you for being so open with us, sharing your studio, sharing your sketchbook. Um, and we hope to see you again real soon. Perfect. Thanks again. All right. Thank you. Take care. All right, guys. Um, my name's not Tyler. Uh, my name is Ryan. Uh, and I just want to say uh, thanks again to Tyler. I will be back in about five minutes uh, with uh, Anija, which I'm really excited to introduce you guys to. It's our first time on Adobe Live. Uh, and we'll be going over a similar process with similar segments. We'll be going over her work, her inspirations. Um, and uh, it's going to be a really great time. So if you can, stick around. Thank you to everyone that was in chat saying hello. Thank you for your questions and comments. Thank you to Kendall, Oliver, and Annika holding down the chat. Appreciate you guys. Uh, also to Wade. Thanks for being here. And Kara. Appreciate you. Uh, and I will see you guys all in just a few moments. Uh, see y'all soon.